hi there welcome to today's class like i said in my last video today we're going to be talking about quantum numbers but before moving to that let's have a quick illustration on that beautiful friday evening you told yourself today i'm going to read for six hours but as you kept on reading it kept on getting boring and boring and boring then you said to yourself you know what i'm going to close this book then as you were thinking an idea popped up and he thought can't i meet kunle you should know more about this subject than i do but you wondered another problem i don't know his address and you felt like a bad friend i figured out i do have my phone then you called him asked for his address and he told you you could come over now just like we do have addresses electrons also have addresses and these addresses are called the quantum numbers Four examples of quantum numbers where QN denotes quantum numbers include principal, azimuthal, magnetic, and spin quantum numbers. And we'll be looking at each of them as we proceed. You can use the acronym PAMS to remember. Now, principal quantum number. The principal quantum number is denoted by letter N and it can only take integral values such as 1, 2, 3, 4 into infinity and never numbers like minus 1 minus 2, minus 3, or even 0. Important formulas to note. 1. Maximum possible number of electrons in a shell is given by 2n squared. 2. The total number of orbitals is given by n squared. Now let's take some questions on this. Calculate the maximum possible number of electrons in the air shell. From my previous video, we discussed that the L shell is the second shell in an atom and the principal quantum number denoted by N will be equals to 2. So using the formula 2N squared, we have 2 into bracket 2 squared which is equals to 8. Now to calculate the total number of orbitals, we use the formula N squared where N is also the principal quantum number which is 2 for L shell as 2 squared is equals to 4 and that gives us a total number of four orbitals, which are the 2s, the 2px, the 2py, and the 2pz orbitals. Now let's talk about the azimuthal quantum number. The azimuthal quantum number is also called the Sommerfeld quantum number and is denoted by letter L. And L is equals to n minus 1, which is principal quantum number minus 1. L values for different subshells. For the S subshell, since the S subshell starts from the first shell, the K shell of principal quantum number 1, using the formula L is equals to N minus 1, the S subshell has an L value to be equals to N minus 1, 1 minus 1 equals to 0. Now for the P subshell, L values will be equals to 2 minus 1, which is equals to 1. For the D subshell, 3 minus 1, which is equals to 2. And for the F subshell, 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. So the SPDS subshell have azimuthal quantum numbers equals 0, 1, 2, 3 respectively. The total number of electrons in the subshell can be gotten by the formula 2L plus 1, where L is the azimuthal quantum number. Now let's take an example. For the P subshell, where the azimuthal quantum number is 1, 2L plus 1, inserting 1, we have 2 into brackets, 1 plus 1, that's 2 plus 1, and that's 3. This tells us that there are 3 orbitals in the P subshell. Now let's talk about the magnetic quantum number. The magnetic quantum number tells us more about the number of orbitals in a subshell. It also ranges from minus L to plus L, where L is the azimuthal quantum number. So if you have an azimuthal quantum number of L is equals to 2, the magnetic quantum number will range from minus 2 to plus 2, and that's minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's take another example. Let's say we have to find the range of values of the magnetic quantum number for S subshell with azimuthal quantum number equals to 0. That will be ML is equals to minus L to plus L 
and that's minus 0 to plus 0 which is still equals to 0 meaning that the s sub shell has just one orbital which is the one we designated with 0 now the spin quantum number the spin quantum number is denoted by ms and it only takes two possible values which are ms is equals to plus half or minus half plus half can be denoted by a clockwise sign or an upward arrow and minus half can be denoted by an anticlockwise sign or a downward arrow this means that in an orbital an electron can only take two positions either it's moving at clockwise or anticlockwise if after watching this and you're still wondering how does this apply to finding the location of an electron well watch my next video on quantum numbers where i'll be giving a diagrammatic breakdown on how you can get the location of electrons by their quantum numbers